Finally, I'm done. I'm just done. I'm done making a video with regards to my gear. Everybody's been asking, John, what's your setup like? What do you have? Now, I've only sent a few pictures out on social media and they're like, you've got to do a rundown. So finally, I'm done making this video and I hope you enjoy it. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, listeners, I am giving you a rundown of the gear on my desk or around my desk. This is not something really extravagant. I am using some low quality stuff along with some high quality stuff. Okay, let's talk about the first thing on my desk. Yes, it's just a normal iPad. I have the iPad that I'm utilizing for a sidecar for my Mac or I'll use it for like notes or PowerPoint presentations, which I'm not really fond of, but I like it right in front of me sometimes when I'm presenting. Why? Because another thing that I'll talk about in just a few moments is my 49 inch monitor. And if you have two monitors, it works out great for separating notes and presenting. But for the purpose of that, I actually have a nice iPad. I do have a cool case for it. And with this case, flip. Right, nice little stand. But if that doesn't work out, I did purchase a little stand for the side of my desk, which the iPad sits on, and I do use it frequently from time to time during presentation. The next thing on my desk is probably one of my favorite tools that I utilize. It's called the Remarkable 2. It's really an electronic tablet that allows me to write and take notes. Yes, I still like to write things down rather than typing them up. I might go back and type them up, but this allows you to actually convert your writing to text, and it does a pretty good job. It has some integrations, not only into your Google Doc, you can download some PowerPoints or PDFs and read them right off of this. This is black and white. Very simple, easy to use. Comes with a cool pen that is an eraser on the top. Get it, hello? I should've wrote hello world. Most people get annoyed with that anymore. Uh, the eraser, I can erase just sections. So if you're in a meeting and you wanna draw that down rather than trying to draw it with your mouse, you can do it with your Remarkable 2. I did get a little case portfolio for it. It slides right in and it has a pen holder as well. Take a look up here for unboxing of the Remarkable 2. The next piece on my desk is probably one of my favorite toys or equipment that I got over the holiday break. I had switched my editing software from ScreenFlow, which I still use for my recording, but for editing purposes, I use DaVinci Resolve. What I purchased was called a speed editor. This is great for the cut page. This allows things for quick edits. I can't go through all this. There's a number of YouTubers out there that have done full on tutorials around the speed editor. And let me tell you what, this saves a lot of time. I actually spent the entire kind of winter break once I got it, you know, learning all the keys, all the shortcuts, figuring out what are the best methods to do it and setting some of my own as well. I suggest you take a look at it. Don't worry folks, I will include a link in the description below to all the products that I have or that you can purchase. The next item on my desk is called an Elgato Stream Deck. I utilize it really primarily for OBS Studio and for your native OS commands. So for Mac, I have a number of shortcuts right on here. One of them is screenshot, save your screenshot. I can go to my social media page from YouTube, Twitter, and go to my website. I can actually program specific shortcuts for your OS. But on the OBS Studio side, I can switch between scenes. This is one of the smaller versions, but I enjoy it because it fits on my desk. You can utilize it with Video Ninja as well. If you haven't heard of Video Ninja, take a look up here. I've got some nice and awesome videos on it. Now, the next thing on my desk is my 49 inch monitor. I got this right at the height of the pandemic. The reason I got it is because I was home a lot more and I had dual monitors, but they were a little bit smaller. I enjoy the 49 inch. It does have some of its limitations. The only limitation I can think of is when you are presenting in full screen mode, it is literally Literally full screen. I don't know how it looks on the other side. Looking for some feedback, comment down below. It works out great for editing software. Using a DaVinci Resolve, I can actually edit and I have a full screen for it and I can see the whole timeline in editing you know, specific things. I enjoy it, I like the size of it. I have complete layouts and with Mac's multi-desktop modes, I can swipe and have another screen to do everything. 
All right, let's talk about my Rode USB mic. I've gone through a couple of mics. I do have a Rode Podcaster. And the reason I went to this is it's very low, compact, and what it does is it allows me to travel with it. The other one was a little more difficult. This one has a stand. I took it out on my latest trip where I was doing a number of events from my hotel room. The quality is excellent and comes across great. I do have an arm extension for it. I've had this arm extension for years and I tend to switch back between the desk stand and the arm extension. I'm gonna stick with the arm extension. It gives that nice, awesome podcaster look. Two things that are behind my monitor. One is another Rode mic hooked into my camera. Before I talk about the camera, the Rode mic is my backup or my go-to one traveling on my camera so I can capture that great audio quality. Now there's not much more I can say about Rode except they're just awesome. They work, the quality is great. I have one behind, I have this. I have wireless lavalier ones for travel. I also have my original podcaster mic. Now this Rode that I'm talking about that's hooked to my camera, my camera is a Sony, a a6400. Now, I originally purchased it and I haven't had it a year, but I purchased it to bring that great video quality content to you, my listeners. I have to mention that I've only changed a couple of settings on it. I am just using the default for almost everything. I might have changed some of the frame rate. One thing I did purchase for it was a battery adapter to plug in. This allows me to put it in and leave it on for almost eight hours. Not sure if that was what it was meant to do, but it works out great. I did take this camera Camera. Now, I wasn't originally going to, but traveling last year, I actually took the camera with me and had it set up in a hotel room on a mini tripod. Now, let's take a look at the light behind me. Now, I'm not gonna shine this. Okay, I lie, I'll shine it. And uh, I just picked this up in the last couple of weeks. This is a battery USB powered light that you can have right behind you. It really brings out not only the stuff behind me, a little bit more of a depth view, but the quality of color really comes out. So the last two things I wanna talk about off to my right side, which I can't disconnect to show you, but I will do a zoom in and a walkthrough. I have some really unique pictures from when I built this. First, I have a GoPro that's just sitting on top of a Pelican case. Nothing unique about the GoPro. I do have a media mod attached to it, so I can hook it in and give really that side dimensional view for quality, whatever you wanna look at. The last thing that I wanna talk about is the ATM Mini Pro. This device is by far, hands down, one of the best quality things that you can purchase. It allows up to about four camera, four distinct camera views, install the software onto my Mac. You can control it completely from there, but I actually have it off to my right where I can just hit it with some my fingers and change some of the keys. Now, the case is not something you can buy. You have to make the case. I'm gonna go through a couple of the photos and videos where you see me making the case and it's my first time actually soldering some wires together. I have some cool buttons, some power buttons on the front of the device where I can turn it on and off. I have a field actually monitor attached to the back of the case. You'll note in the picture that it brings another view. So if I have a multiple uh, HDMIs plugged into it, what you can do is you can see the preview and you can see the production view and switch over to it. Only the ATM Mini Pro ISO handles this type of external field monitor. If you get the other one, it's a, it's a little more for this one, but if you get the other one, it won't allow you to do the field monitor. This case is fully travelable. I can close it up and travel with it. Something that I did based off of a video is saw was on the back, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna create some ports. So I drilled holes into the Pelican case and all of those ports that you see on the back allow me to connect right to the ATM Mini. Everything on top is done with 3D printing and it's, it's actually locked down, fully secure. Underneath, I have a little cheese plate that's hooked to a tripod. Okay, listeners, I hope you really enjoyed my setup and a quick walkthrough on what I'm utilizing for my podcast. If you wanna know more information, hit me up in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and notify. This is the first time that I am doing a video rundown. I'd like to get some feedback, how well I did, what other information you need from me, and how can I help you out? Until next time. <laughs>